Welcome to the latest Acuity update. It is 10th of February, 2021. I'm Jonathan Brown, founder of the Acuity fully decentralized social media platform. And today I'm going to give you another, uh, another deep dive. So I'm going to give you uh, a progress update on the Acuity Atomic Swap smart contract. So this is a, a smart contract that will enable fully decentralized trading between Acuity and Ethereum. So uh, to start with, um, the, the first big change I've made to the smart contract is that I've actually divided it into two smart contracts. So the, the functionality needs to be deployed on both uh, Ethereum and Acuity. And the, the original idea is that this would be in the form of uh, a single smart contract that would be deployed on, on both blockchains. However, uh, upon looking through the smart contract, it became very clear that uh, it really has two, uh, two separate functionalities that are actually very independent. So the, the smart contract had the, the sell functionality and it had the buy functionality. And these were actually uh, totally, uh, they could operate totally independently. So it, it made sense to divide the, the smart contract in two. So we now have uh, this smart contract, the Acuity Atomic Swap Sell, and we have the Acuity Atomic Swap Buy. So this just uh, simplifies everything. So it, it means that uh, the smart contracts can just focus on uh, on one specific task. So we can see in the uh, atomic swap uh, cell smart contract. So we have the, uh, the state for, uh, for the, the cell orders and the cell locks. We have the, the events for the, the selling process. We can create order. Uh, we can create a cell order. We can lock a cell. We can unlock a cell. We can time out a cell. And I've just added some, uh, some simple getters. So you can get an order value e either by passing in the, the address of the seller and the price or by passing in the order ID, which is actually derived from the seller and the price. And you can also get full information on uh, a cell lock. So if you pass in a hash secret, then you can get back all of the information from contract state about that cell lock. And then on the, on the buy side, it's, uh, well, it's, it's even simpler because you just have these uh, buy locks. So again, we have the, the state. Um, so just a, a mapping between the, uh, the hashed secret for the lock and the buy lock structure. Again, we have the events, and then we have the lock by, unlock by, timeout by, and then uh, we have a, a getter for uh, get by lock. Uh, so the, the getters have this uh, view keyword. So this means that they, uh, they don't modify the, the contract state. Okay, so the other thing I've done is I've, uh, I've implemented some uh, unit tests. So for the unit tests, I actually use this, uh, this great system called DAP Tools. So if you want to install this, you can find the instructions at dap.tools. And one of the reasons I really like uh, this testing framework for Solidity smart contracts is that you can write your unit tests in Solidity. So that's, uh, that, that's really great. So we have unit tests for the uh, atomic swap uh, cell smart contract in, in this smart contract. And then we have the unit tests for the, the buy smart contract as well. So I have uh, in, in the repository, uh, I have this small script. So uh, the, the version of Solidity that we're actually using is uh, 0.8.0. And this is the latest version of Solidity, which is not the version of Solidity that comes with DAP tools. However, the latest version of DAP tools is compatible with this version of, Solid of Solidity. So I've simply installed Solidity with my, uh, my operating system package manager. And then I just have to have this line uh, export uh, DAP 
underscore salsi just to to tell the DAP testing framework to use uh, the operating system installed version of Solidity instead of the version that that comes with uh, with DAP. And then we just run uh, DAP. So DAP is the, the command from DAP tools. We tell it to test and we add the uh, the verbose flag. So if I if I just run that like this and very quickly it uh, it runs all the the unit tests and tells us that everything has uh, has passed. So I'll just give you a, a quick a quick rundown of uh, of the unit tests. So uh, with uh, with the DAP testing framework, it's uh, you write a separate smart contract for the tests and uh, you import uh, this uh, this solidity file so this gives you uh, some commands such as uh, assert equal and that sort of thing and then you make a, a contract which which contains the the code for uh, the unit tests for testing your smart contract so you say uh, contract the name of your testing contract and then is DS test. So this imports the, the methods for testing. And each, uh, each of these functions that uh, start with the word test are, these are considered to be unit tests. And before each of these tests is run, it will always run the, uh, the, the setup method. So for each unit test, it simply creates an instance of the, the smart contract that we are testing. And so all I've done is for each of these uh, these methods, I have implemented an equivalent uh, test that just uh, calls the function and then uh, make sure the the correct modifications are being made to to state. So we we can have a quick look at that. So we want to create uh, an order. So in order to pass in Acuity or Ethereum, we, we specify it here. So we pass in 50. And, uh, and then this number five is the price that we are selling at. And then this, uh, this function, it, it actually returns the, the order ID. Um, although normally, if you're just uh, calling uh, this, this method in a transaction, you don't actually get a a return value from a, a transaction, um, you would look at the uh, the event that, that gets uh, emitted. But uh, because we are entirely within Solidity, we can just use the return value to get the order ID. Um, and then we just use some of the, the getters to make sure that the correct information has been stored. So we, uh, we call the, the get order value uh, getter function and there are two separate uh, ways you can call it so either you pass in the address of the seller which in in this case is this uh, unit testing smart contract along with the sell price and that will return 50 because that is how much we sent in and uh, you can also call it with the order id which uh, is derived from the seller address and the uh, the selling price. So again, uh, we assert that the return value from this getter function is 50, which is what we passed in in the first place. And then we, we just check that the, the balance that is actually stored in the uh, in the Acuity Atomic Swap Cell smart contract is 50 because when it gets instanti instantiated it's going to be zero and then whenever we pass in the uh, the first cell order then it will go up to 50. So that's the the first test. We then we test the the cell lock so um, we create a cell lock so um, we're calling this from the same uh, the same seller with the same value so we know uh, which cell order the funds are being locked from. We pass in the, the hashed secret. So if you're not sure how 
the, uh, the hash secret system works, you can watch my, my previous video, which explains the, the whole process. Uh, we pass in the, the timeout and we pass in the, uh, <clears throat> the value that we wish to lock. And so again, we can just call the, the getters to, to make sure that the correct, uh, the correct values are being returned. <clears throat> So we, uh, we test the cell lock, we test uh, unlock cell. Um, so uh, again, we have to make sure that the, the, the timeout information is correct. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to, um, to unlock the cell. So we specify the, the timeout is 1,000 seconds in the future. Um, so that's for a test unlock cell and then for test timeout cell. So this is the situation where uh, the funds have been locked up, but the other party has uh, not revealed the secret. And so um, the seller wants to retrieve those locked funds. So it, that's why we just specify the, the timeout to be the, the current timestamp. So this just shows you how, uh, how effective it is to write unit tests in, in Solidity using the, the DAP framework. Uh, one little thing I need to implement is I need to test the, uh, the various failure modes. So um, for example, if you, uh, if you attempt to uh, lock a cell, but there, the cell order is not big enough, then this will actually throw an error. So I need to uh, test uh, for, uh, for these situations. And then we have the, uh, on the other side, we have um, the, the buy smart contract. And then in a, in a very similar way, we, uh, we just test the, the methods, which are actually uh, quite, quite similar. Um, so that's just a little update on the progress for the Acuity Atomic Swap smart contract. Um, so I'm going to continue working on this and also making some... Uh, some improvements on the on the polka dot implementation for for acuity so we can actually uh, deploy these um, these ethereum smart contracts to the acuity blockchain and uh, hopefully interact with them using the same web3 code that we will use to interact with the smart contracts on the ethereum blockchain so i think that's uh, enough for today so thank you for your time and I'll, uh, I'll have another update in a few days' time. Thank you.